Hey guys, Dr. Deuce back again with another great music tech tip for you. Today we're going to be looking at humanizing your tracks, giving your beats that more human feel, especially when you're relying on inputting notes using the musical typing window as well as the ultra beat module. Okay, so let's get started. Now for many of you guys who don't actually play keyboards, you often have to rely on using the mouse pointer to draw in your notes, creating your chords or even the musical typing module like this right here. For others of you who don't have a keyboard or some sort of trigger pad to input your drums, you rely on the ultra beat module, which is also a great tool. However, one of the limitations of using these techniques is velocity and feel. If you wanna create that sort of live feel, just kind of humanizing um, your production, then these methods are somewhat restrictive, but I'm gonna show you how to get around it. Okay, so let's start off by looking at a very simple kick and snare pattern done in the Ultra Beat module. Okay, cool. So everything is exactly on point. Okay, everything is quantized exactly to 1 16th. Uh, division and also the velocity amounts are exactly the same as you can see along here. Also, let's look at the uh, kick drum, exactly the same. Now, we were looking at the snare drum hits before, which is this, and here's the kick. Okay, so again, the velocity is exactly the same for every single strike and the quantize is exactly on point. Now, that's not normal. Now, a drummer doesn't strike a drum at the same velocity or same strength every time he hits, nor does he or she um, strike the drum exactly on time. It's either slightly early or slightly late. Now let's also look at how the musical typing keyboard works in terms of velocity and how rigid that can be. Now, now let's look at the velocity amounts. If we were to double click here, now by clicking on this icon, we'll display the velocity amount. Right, and as you can see, all the way across, the velocities are exactly the same. Often, once you guys have finished uh, putting your hi-hats in, you've got your hi-hats quantized to a 1 16th division. Now what we're gonna do in this tutorial is show you how to loosen things up, how to make things a little bit more live sounding, just to add that extra human feel, okay? Now this is a very simple four bar loop I've recorded with a kick, snare, hi-hats, shaker, tambourine, and a simple two chord Rhodes pattern. Okay, have a listen to it in its dry mechanical form. Okay, so as I went through each of the regions, you can see that everything is quantized exactly to a 1 16th division, and also the velocities of every single note is exactly the same. So for example here, all of these notes in this section have a velocity of 50, whereas in the tambourine section, let's see, what's this, 100. I think all of the drums are set to 100, okay? So it sounds all right, but it's very rigid. It's very stiff and very mechanical. Now we're gonna loosen things up. So in order to get things sounding a bit more realistic, we need to start off by getting the levels right, okay? So let's start with the kick and snare. Okay, I'm gonna drop my snare down just a touch. Okay, now I'm gonna bring the hi-hats in. Okay, and now the shaker. Okay, let's back that off a little bit. Now for the tambourine. It's way too loud, let's bring that back. Okay. 
There we go. And now for the keyboard. I'm going to back this off a bit, bit more background. Okay, that's the first step. Okay, so now that we've set the levels up nicely, we're going to move on to a really fantastic function in Logic called Humanize. Now, the Humanize tool is excellent because it allows you to randomly set up the start position, velocity, and length of a node in a region. So let's look at the kick drum, for example. Okay, so as we know, all of the notes have been perfectly quantized to 1 16th division, and all of the velocities have been registered um, at 100. So we now open up the humanized window. The shortcut for this is Command 9 on your keyboard. And up here under presets, you're going to go to humanize. Great. Now these are the parameters that we can set. Note position, this is the start position, velocity and length. Okay, so note length is not so important right now because we're just talking about short drum hits. However, position is important. These are the default settings which I tend to use. And what this means, when we hit select and operate, Logic will automatically adjust the start position and velocity of each of these individual notes to start slightly early or slightly late or up or down by a unit value of 10. Okay, so let's try that out. Now we're going to select and operate. And as you can see right here, the velocities have changed slightly up and slightly down, which sort of mimics what a drummer would do. When a drummer hits the kick, it's not always going to be exactly the same velocity. Also, let's zoom in and have a look at the start position. Okay. Now you can see this note is slightly early. So is this one. And this one is just before the line. Okay. Now I'm going to repeat the process just to make this kick drum a little bit more loose. Okay, so command nine and hit that once again. Now this note is just a little bit late and this one is just a little bit early. We can shorten this actually. Yeah, so this one's a bit early and this one's a bit late. It's just enough movement just off the beat. So it gives the kick drum a bit more of a human touch. Okay, now the last thing we got to do with the kick drum is make sure that the very first hit in each measure is exactly on point. So we're going to quantize the first hit. Otherwise, it will not sound whenever this sequence is being played. That's the only one I'm going to quantize. Okay, right. Now I'm going to do the same process with all of these drums. So command nine, select and operate. And again, okay. That's enough for that one. Now for the hi-hats, command nine, and select and operate twice. Shaker the same, and the same for the tambourine. Okay, now this time, let's have a quick listen to the keyboards on their own, just to see how they sound before they've been processed. And this time we're going to give it plus or minus 15 units. And with the start position, we're just going to bring that up to about 15 as well. Okay, now let's try that. And again, and see how that sounds. Definitely better. Definitely a little bit more free, not too loose, but definitely a bit freer, a bit less mechanical. Again, you can play with this as much as you like just to create that sort of feel that you're looking for. Okay, so there are a couple more things that I want to show you in terms of enhancing the feel of your production elements, such as your drums and other parts. So we're going to start off by listening to the kick, snare and hi-hat, and then we're going to do something with the hi-hats that's definitely going to add a bit more feel to the groove. Okay, nice and plain. Now this time, what we're going to do on a hi-hat track, we're going to insert a tape delay and 
this is your tape delay, just plain old tape delay. Okay, no change there. What we'll do, however, is set the note value to this one and have a listen now. Okay, we're going to reduce the wet. Okay, and we're going to add a bit of a filter. Okay. Now listen to it off. And on. Okay. Nice. Okay. We're going to do something very similar to the shakers. And this time we're going to use a stereo delay. But let's listen to the shakers as they are before processing. Now let's apply a stereo delay. Change these values and filter. Switched off, switched back on. Okay, sounding good. Let's just take the volume off just a touch. Now for the tambourine, same technique. Adding a stereo delay. And I think we use the same settings as we did on the shaker. And let's have a listen with the tam tambourines on their own. Now with the stereo delay. Just livens things up just a touch. Okay. Now bring our keys back in. Now those techniques are really simple and definitely add a bit more looseness, a bit more feel to these drums and this keyboard part. Now the main things to remember is make sure you set the levels up correctly so that there's a good balance between each drum part and the other instruments in your set. Okay. Secondly, use the humanize function, which you can access by using command nine, or if you were to right click on a MIDI region, go to MIDI and then MIDI transform in this list, you'll find it down here, humanize. Okay. The other thing you can do is apply some very subtle delay settings to things like hi-hats, shakers, and other simple percussion parts, which also add a nice flavor, a nice feel to your production. And again, things like keyboard parts and stuff like that, you can apply the humanize function to add that human feel to your work, okay? I really do hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. And do remember to comment, subscribe, and like this video and I'll be back with more real soon. Thanks for watching. This is Dr. Deuce. I'm out. Peace.